welcome back. This is the start of the final major topic in this course, which is all about memory. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of how memory works in Java. This may feel a little bit academic, but we need to get a good grounding in some of the basic concepts, as that's going to be crucial to understand how garbage collection works, and we certainly need this knowledge also before we can look at tuning the virtual machine. So in this chapter, we're going to cover what the stack and the heap are and how they work together to provide the memory that our applications use. We'll understand how variable scope actually works. How is it that variables declared in one method are only visible in that method? And we'll finish the chapter with a basic scenario. We'll consider how variables that we pass from one method to another are managed in memory. We won't be writing any code in this chapter, so you can sit back and I hope enjoy the video. As a developer, it is important to have a good understanding of how memory works in Java. This knowledge is going to be useful both to help optimize applications that you write, and it can help you avoid creating problems in your code that will be very difficult to trace. Before we start learning about how memory works, I do need to say that the Java Virtual Machine is incredibly complicated. And as a Java developer, we don't need to understand exactly how it operates. Instead, we'll learn about different aspects of how memory is managed in a simplified format. We'll present the structures and relationships between different parts of Java's memory visually in a way which will hopefully be easy to understand. This isn't going to be a completely precise representation of how memory is actually managed by the JVM, but by the end of this section, you will have a good understanding of how memory works and how you should take account of this in your code. Our starting point then is understanding the terms, the stack and the heap. When our applications run, they need access to some of our computer's memory. For example, to store the objects that we create and hold in memory. This memory is split into two sections, the stack and the heap. The term the stack is very widely used and we'll be using it in this course, but actually there isn't a single stack in a Java application, there can be many of them. Every thread has its own stack. The stack is a very efficient data structure which is managed effectively by the Java Virtual Machine. One important aspect of the stack is that Java knows exactly when data on the stack can be destroyed. Now you may already be familiar with the concept of a stack from general computing. If you're not, then you need to know that the stack works as follows. We add data to the stack by pushing it to the top. Each time a new set of items is added, the data that was added first is...